You have to be realistic. You have to set goals. Always found an excuse to give the running session somehow. Now I'm just like, it's a training like everything else. It's an opportunity to improve. I've loved sports ever since I was a little kid. And uh, I didn't really have a sport that I was like very much into growing up. I mean, I've played, I always played tennis all my childhood, but I've always tried like lots of different stuff. So I played soccer for a while. I played what they call handball here. I don't think it's a thing in the US, but yeah, I've tried lots of different things and, um, but never really had something where that I'd like try to pursue on a professional level. And then I went to the United States when I was like 16 and I did an exchange year over there. And that's where I like started with American football. I got a bit more into strength training. So I did like three months of basically like going to Gold's Gym, doing lots of bodybuilding because they didn't have yeah. a basketball team at the time. So there wasn't a sport that I wanted to do at the school and I didn't want to play tennis because everyone, like I can play tennis at home. And uh, yeah, I tried out baseball over there as well. And uh, yeah, American football stuck with me and that's what I started doing once I got back home to Switzerland as well. So you pretty much, you went through all the sports. <laughs> Yeah, I've tried. I've tried a little bit of everything, and I would say even to this day, I still like to like to do different stuff. Like I like to go skiing, cross country skiing. I like to play, right. I don't know, table tennis. Where there's a table tennis in the, in the gym, you know. I'm not like very very overly focused on just one thing. Right, right. That's good. And now, when you said you came over to the U.S., where did you do your exchange year? Where did you go to school? I was in San Jose, California. Oh yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping that, that my English is still, uh, that was high school. Oh, high school. So I did okay. my, yeah, yeah. I, I did my senior year in high school in the States and I played, just played the varsity team there. I was really lucky, really lucky that my football team at the school was, I would say pretty bad. So I think they hadn't won <laughs> a game in like two years. And I was lucky because I mean, coming over, I didn't have any clue about Amer American football whatsoever. So I didn't know the rules. I, I didn't know how to play the game basically. And if I would have been to a very good school, they probably wouldn't have spent the time to teach me all the rules and everything, but because the team right, was right. like somewhat bad and I was like, I would say I was fairly athletic coming over already. Um, they were really happy just to have like, I would say a good athlete on the team. And they were happy to teach me, teach me the rules, let me play both offense, defense pretty much right away. And yeah, just threw me in the game a bunch. So that helped out a lot. Right, right. So now when did you like really get into like the working out kind of stuff? Was that during that time, probably like midway through high school or something like that? Yeah, I would say so. Like end, end of high school or midway through high yeah. school. And I mean, yeah. working out like in the gym has been a part of me ever, like pretty much ever since I've been to the gym for the first time when I was like 14 or 15. So whatever, whatever I did, I always like went to the gym on top of that. So when I played tennis, I would go to the gym before I played a tennis match. Or when I then played American football, I would like do extra trainings on the side and just try to get some gym training in, even though it wasn't part of the team training. So I've always liked that part, but I, I didn't find out that there was actually like a sport to it until I discovered CrossFit. And I never, like, I never really wanted to go into the bodybuilding. That's yeah. Yeah. So what was your plan at that point in time? Like, did you have a, a goal of like maybe playing a sport in college or going to college or anything like that? Or were you just kind of seeing how things went? Well, basically sports was, it was always fun for me. And also then like when I was in the States playing football, it's in Switzerland, it's a bit different because it's not really a thing to go to college and play college, college sports at all. Because I mean, in the States, it's a big, to go with a scholarship to a certain university and like try and make the team but here it's in switzerland it's structured a lot differently so most of the sports happen through like a club that you go to but it doesn't have anything to do with the school and uh, also for universities there's not like a big university club or or a team that everybody cheers on it's more like you choose your university and if you're still into sports you're joining a club on the side but it's not like the whole school is just like fired up about the soccer team or, or whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So I didn't have that in mind. Uh, it was just basically all for fun. And, uh, I actually got offered 
uh, scholarship to play American football in one of, I think it was like second division um, college in the States. But for me, that like it wasn't really an option to do that because it was always clear that I was just going to stay in the States for a year, then come back and like finish my school and do everything um, back home. So I declined that offer and then I just, uh, I, st I stuck to American football when I came back and played that until I, until I was like almost done with my, with my uh, university degree. What do you have your degree in? I have a degree in business administration. So it doesn't really have much to do with, with sports, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's funny. Um, no, you meant, you mentioned something that's very interesting and I think we should definitely touch on it. You mentioned like the, uh, the typical path, right? Like, so here in the States, in the United States, um, the classic, the typical path of an athlete or just an individual in general is you go to high school, maybe you play a sport, maybe you don't, you try to get recruited, you play in college, you get your degree, and then you get a nine to five job. Like that's the typical route or the, you know, the expected path. Um, what's it like in, in Switzerland? Yeah, I would say it's pretty similar. I mean, if you, if you do make it to, to the university level, then that's the way to go. A lot of people also choose to basically go right into work after high school. And then there's a lot of different pathways that you can like still do further education while you're actually on a job. So I would say that's the more typical route to go to. You finish your high school, you do your, you start your first job and then you do some extra, um, yeah, some extra schooling on the side. But um, yeah, I was like, I chose the university way and that's, I would say pretty similar to how it is in the States. Besides that, just the sport part, like becoming an athlete, that that's very much separated from the schools, uh, from the school system. Right, right. And so, like, what was your what was your plan in mind that you had with with going the the business administration route? Like, did you want to get into uh, maybe owning your own business, or you know, what what were your thoughts? What were your plans and goals at that point in time? Or did you have any? Because I know at that time it's tough to really like <laughs> have a set in stone it is goal, tough. you know. It is tough. Even nowadays, it, it, it is still tough sometimes to think what am I going to do? <laughs> now, um, yeah, basically, yeah. I was thinking I was thinking two ways. Either I'm going to go the sports direction because I'm really into sports or I'm going to go into more of a broader direction because I don't really know what, what I want to do with my life. <laughs> and then if I looked at the sports side, it was, okay, I'm going to go to university and I'm going to study sports. And if I study sports, then I'm most likely going to become a sports teacher. And I like, although it is a great job and I, I, th I think I would enjoy it for, for some years, it wasn't really a path that I wanted to go towards to, because I, I just kind of felt that if I was a sports teacher, I would have been like stuck in the same position for pretty much the rest of my life. And I just didn't want to do that. And so I just, I chose to do more of a broader education that I could use for whatever else is going to like life is going to throw at me. And I think business administration is like one of the things that, I mean, it doesn't really matter which, which direction you're going, there's always some sort of business involved. And I always figured that if I liked sports so much, I'm going to find a way to, to make the business administration work in the sports field. And whether that be in, in marketing or owning my own business or whatever it is, like, I still don't know where that's going to lead me for now. I'm just like focused on being an athlete and competing, but I'm, at some point I'm going to hopefully be able to use whatever I've learned for in that business degree to apply to my, whatever job it's going to be. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. And I think like CrossFit too has grown so much um in in just like the past like decade or so right like especially if you're at the the top end of that field it's becoming more and more of an opportunity for um athletes in crossfit to make something of it after they're done competing because ultimately like any in any sport like the competing competing days will come to an end and you'll have to move on at some point and some people are lucky enough to be able to move on past that and coach or have their own business related to their their sport that they were you know competing in beforehand so i mean i think that's definitely a an opportunity in the future especially if you're competing in the games and you know potentially even winning the game someday right um but you mentioned that you're you know you've always been in love with 
with sports and you've always you've always loved that the competitive nature of things did you have any siblings or any family members that that competed in any sports um i do have a younger brother and uh, we've always been okay. uh, very competitive ever since, like growing oh, yeah. up um yeah. yeah he's into he's into sports as well but i would say i've i've set the bar quite high for for many things so <laughs> it seems that he's like the unsporty one in the family whereas like if if you'd put him yeah. amongst the normal group of people, he'd be like super fit, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, no, he he's into like he's doing the CrossFit training as well, and he's into weightlifting. We're actually both like Swiss national champions in Olympic weightlifting. Not that the level is crazy uh -huh. high, but because there's a lot of weight categories, it's like yeah, <laughs> we both got that title. And uh, he's actually doing bobsleigh, so like a more winter typical mm. swiss kind of thing yeah. yeah 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 that's cool that's awesome and so when did it like really all come about right like i know you said you were working out when you were like 14 15 uh when did you learn of crossfit and like how did you get involved with it was it somebody that, that you met or like an event that you went to or a friend that, that was competing in crossfit yes yeah, so it's it's a few things together and i'm not quite sure how exactly it it happened, but I mean, there's one event where I kind of got like my attention got drawn to CrossFit quite a lot was when I was uh, actually in college and I was sitting next to Lucas Esslinger, who was like the top Swiss um, CrossFit athlete for quite a while. And I was sitting right next to him at this, in, a, in a seminar and then I saw his backpack and there was like the CrossFit badge sticker and his name on it. And I just like looked at him and like I had a little bit less space than usual because he was also a little bit of a bigger guy, right? And I saw his backpack and I asked him, it's like, hey, have you been to the CrossFit Games? And he's like, yeah, he has. I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like, yeah, have you been in a team or like, where were you competing? He's like, no, no, individual. And I just didn't know, like I didn't know much about CrossFit, um, but I've seen some videos of the games on YouTube somewhere at some time, but I didn't really pay attention too much to it. And that same evening I went at, I went home and I looked up like all his events from all the years that he's been to the games. And I just found it so fascinating to like sit next to this guy who has represented Switzerland at the highest level for quite some years. And I didn't even know about him. And the next day I had like so many questions and would have loved to ask him everything about training because I was just so fascinated. But um, yeah, that's kind of like that draw a lot of attention to CrossFit. Like it opened up a world that I didn't really know before. And then because of American football, I used to have like lots of problems with my lower back, just, I don't know, it didn't really move well or train too smart. And then I went to a physio who was located in a CrossFit affiliate. And then this physio introduced me to some of like the CrossFit movements, like, or he asked, like in a screening, he asked me to do an overhead squat to see my mobility. And it was like, I've never, like I've never squatted really below parallel or tried to hold a barbell overhead. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it was just like, I've seen, a, yeah, he's, he's introduced me to a lot of movements that I haven't played with before. And I've seen a lot of people there training that did stuff that I found pretty amazing and I'd never tried before. So that got me really excited and made me want to like try all those things and see how I stack up with, uh, against those people. Because I've always seen myself as like an athletic person that can do all sports and everything. And then all of a sudden there's so many people who can do stuff that I've never tried before. And yeah, that's kind of how I got into it. So it was like, yeah, my last football season there. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your, like, what was your base before going into CrossFit? Like, were you more into like the Olympic lifting or, cause like everybody has their own path into like where they end up. Um, some guys start off just like, you know, doing upper body stuff, bodybuilding in like some go into the power lifting or the Olympic lifting. Like, where did you really start off and get that base? Yeah, that is a good question. Like I've done all my training kind of on my own, just following weird programs that I found, found online. And uh, I tried to educate myself to do a smart thing. But I think at the end of the day, all I used to do was just go to the gym, go heavy and just, just try and lift the biggest weights that I could, but without being super smart about it. And um, so it was more, I would say, like strength slash bodybuilding type of training. And then uh, how I started to get into CrossFit was more through, like the first thing that I really tried to learn properly was Olympic weightlifting, because I just noticed that, I mean, it, 
obviously it's very technical and I just noticed that I had no clue of how to do the proper snatch or clean and jerk. And then I like did a seminar, I've watched a lot of just YouTube videos over and over and over and over again, went to the gym and tried to practice the drills over and over and over again. And uh, yeah, that's that was kind of the start, but I would say I had a good strength and power base, generally speaking. I want to hear about your first uh, like CrossFit session. Uh, how All that right. went. Yeah, so, I mean, that's some people have stories of like, oh, the first time I went to the gym, I did Fran or I did this workout. And I actually have no idea. I mean, yeah. I did some weightlifting workouts at university. I did some weird EMOMs with squats and pull-ups and whatever. But I don't remember like my first yeah. CrossFit workout. But what I do remember is like the first time that I did the open because that was like the one thing that apparently everybody was doing. So uh, I heard about it and I had like three months to prepare for it. And I was like, I was still in football training, but I was like, oh, I'm just going to spend three months like going all into that, into that CrossFit thing. And then I'll go back to football. And I just trained hardcore for the open doing like double sessions, even though I couldn't do many of the skills, but <laughs> whatever, <laughs> wasn't the smartest at the time. And uh, then the first workout was 18.1 for me. So that was like an MRAP, 50 minute MRAP of rowing, toe to bar and dumbbell hand clean and jerk. So really like more of a low skill workout. And I was yeah. able to do that workout in the final heat, Friday night lights against like some of the people that were trying to go to the games as a team. And I just happened to win that workout. <laughs> like I had no idea how it happened. Wow. Like I couldn't, I, I really don't know. Um, I was really surprised. And uh, I mean, the people repeated and some of them then beat me in their repeats. But anyway, I was like, all right, I might be not too bad at this thing. And then the next workout was <laughs> into, it was, it was a workout of dumbbell squats, burpees. And then the second part was a one rep max power clean. So that was like the one thing that I, like I was powerful and strong. And like being technically, yeah, I yeah. would say pretty bad. I still did like a 136 kilo. So like, what's that in pounds? Like a 300 pound um, power clean. Yeah, that's. Wow. And I was like second strongest in the gym. I was like, okay, that's decent. Like I'm, I'm good at this. But then I got crushed that's in crazy. a double under workout because I couldn't really figure out how to do those double unders. And I got like really, <laughs> really, like really bad score in that workout. So that put me out of the, like being in a good position. Uh, but yeah, that was like my first experience was like doing the open and uh, having some good workouts and getting, uh, got kicked in the face a few times as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Like the, the Olympic lifting stuff, like the cleans, that must have been, I mean, for me especially too, is like, that's one of those things you have to be more functional to be able to do it well. And like your weight is a very correlative to how your technique is like what, you know, your form and everything like that. Like, how did you, how long did it take you to really get the form of like a clean down? Cause obviously that's one of the biggest things in CrossFit. Yeah. I would, I mean, I would say a decent two years or so to get to like a proper mm -hmm. technique. It was more so the snatch that I was, working with like the squat and the like the cleans were okay you can just kind of mm -hmm. rip it off the ground if you if you really need to but uh the snatch was a bit more uh more of a technical thing i mean it, it still is but it's decent now like i can hit solid weights consistently whereas after like a year or so i just hit like a 265 snatch out of nowhere or like a 260 pound snatch out of nowhere and then I couldn't repeat it for like a full year. Ooh. And I was always off for like 10, 15, 20 pounds just cause like, I was just technically wow. lucky, I guess, for that one attempt. And then I just had to like oh, take two crazy. steps back, just keep working so many, so much, so many percentage lifts and uh, to get to the point where I could just two twenty, could just do 225 almost every day. And then I just started to yeah. switch awesome. my focus from trying to hit a one rep max to trying to hit a certain lift nine out of 10 times. And that's helped me a lot to progress, especially with the more technical stuff. Interesting. And now how many, how many years have you been doing CrossFit? So I would, I would always say I started in 2018. Technically it's probably been more like end of 17 that I started, but I mean, 2018 now it's uh, 22 is like four years, 
four and a half years of CrossFit. Gotcha. And so what was your, like, so I know there's, I'm not too familiar with, with CrossFit, but I have like looked into it a little bit here and there. So what are, I know there's like a few different phases. So it's the open and then it's the semis and then it's the games. Is that right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's also difficult because they've changed it a few times over the last few years. And uh, the basic structure now is there's the open and it's like everybody does it. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. whether you're a competitive athlete, whether you're just recreational doing it twice a week or whether you are scaling everything to different weights and movements, like everybody can participate. And then from there, it gets to the quarterfinals where the top 10% from the open get to advance. And then it's like, not real workouts, but a bit more like more high skill, more higher weights, stuff like that. And from there, the top 60 in Europe or top 120 in the States, they advance to the semifinals. And the semifinals is like a big event that qualifies the best to the games. But that's an in-person competition. Right. So the open is everything is online. They announce a workout, you film it at home, and then you send your score in. The quarterfinals is the same format. They announce a workout, you perform it at home. Now you have to have like a judge and the right video angles and stuff like that, but it's still not an actual in-person competition. But then from the semifinals on, it's like, it's live, there's a stadium, there's people judging you on the movements and all that stuff. Right. So and that's like the furthest the, you've that, made it so far. So I've been to the semifinals the last two years. Wow. Okay. And then the top 40 people were top 40 people, people worldwide make it to the games. So that's like the, the one big step or oh. the next big step that I'm trying to take. Yeah. Right. So what place did you take? Like, what was your exact placing? So I was 16 in the semifinals last year. And okay. last year from that competition, the top five made it on to, to the games. So it's like, it's only 11 spots, but those 11 spots are like, I mean, that's like a big step to take. <laughs> yeah. Highly competitive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So there's more, yeah. there's more available spots in the U S than there is in Europe. That's what I'm, I'm getting. Yeah. Yeah. So right. it, yeah, it depends on how competitive the field is in a certain region. So some spots mm -hmm. are guaranteed okay. and then the strength of field is going to be determined of the results from the qualifying processes. And then it's most likely it's going to be like the States are going to have probably about twice as much, uh, twice as many spots as Europe. And then Africa is going to have like a spot or two. Australia has some spots. Yeah. I don't know the exact spots in mind, but right. Something along the lines of that. Hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So let, let's dive a little bit more into like, so you mentioned since about the end of 2017, early 2018, you've been doing CrossFit. So what has your progression looked like in terms of training and like your training habits, eating habits, like what has really changed to put you in the position where you are today? Cause obviously I know a lot more goes into it than just lifting weights. Like you're, you're 24 <laughs> seven athlete, um, when you're doing stuff like CrossFit. So, um, let's dive into it. I would say the biggest thing for me that's changed over the years is that I've become much more structured. So in the beginning it was more mm -hmm. like, well, I want to, I want to be good at CrossFit. I'm just going to train a lot. And then I've tried to do my two trainings a day or not, not all the time from the start, but let, let's just say I was trying to do double sessions whenever I could, but it was more like, all right, I have a training. Um, I'll fit it in, in the morning. I'm going to go there at whatever eight. And then I need to be out at 10 and then I'll do this and then I'll do that. And then at some point I'm hoping to get that session, second session in but sometimes I have to cut something or do more on the other day. And it was a lot of like, just trying to make everything work somehow. Whereas now I'm at a point where I really like make it a priority. I have blockers in my calendar that are just like, well, nine to 1130 is training every Monday. And that's like fixed. There's nothing that's, that comes in between. And then I'm going to do the second session. I'm going to start it at two and there's another two hour block in the phone and my phone goes on mute and there's no one like I'm not available at the time. And then every, everything else gets structured around that. So if there's anything that I need to do for whatever, whatever work stuff, coaching stuff, personal trainings, or f friends, family on the side, everything gets structured around the training. 
Gotcha. And so like, what is your, uh, I mean, you mentioned training twice a day, obviously that's, that's taxing on the body. Do you take any rest days or do you just kind of go right through? No, I definitely do rest days. Um, for me, it's Sunday. It's like the typical yeah. rest day. So that's pretty fixed. And then also Thursday for me is, um, like an active rest day, I would say. So usually like a longer, low intensity conditioning session, but yeah, that's when I get most of the work done as well. Is there any, <laughs> yeah. Is there, is there any, uh, is there any one aspect of training that you, you don't look forward to? Like, is there a certain, cause I know CrossFit, like there's swimming, there's running, yeah. like, is there one particular thing where you're like, Oh boy, here we go. I would say um, it's been like that for a while. So I, it used to be the running sessions for me. I've, like, I'm not a good, or I haven't been a good runner. I never really liked running, especially not like the longer runs. Like in football, it was like, if it's suicide sprints and it's more than twice, it's like, that's conditioning. And uh, I don't like it. <laughs> um, that's that stuck with <laughs> yeah. me for, for quite a while. And whenever it was, I don't know, let's say it was cold, it was raining. Like I've always found an excuse to just skip the running session somehow. But now I'm, I would say I'm at a point where I don't really see it as an option yeah, or no, try it's, to it's very like weigh it against other sessions. I would say, especially in the beginning, it's like, like everything else, it's an opportunity you're really to really motivate it, get it done every look week. forward to certain things and then you dread other yeah. things. And That's it's the like discipline you have those, aspect of it right there. Those highs I mean, and lows like and of emotions you, when it comes learn, to training. Like year after whereas year, I feel like now it's much more It's not whether you want to do it or not. Of course, there's stuff that I find exciting or like to do a bit more than others. We hear with everybody too. Like everybody we talk to kind of hits that point in time. I just look at the training. I'll get it done. I'll put while, whatever effort I need to, to get for my the work as done an and then and I get on to the next one. But it's not like, oh yeah, like, oh, my, you know, Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon intervals going to be really great. And uh, <laughs> it's just like, all right, Tuesday intervals, let's go. <laughs> That's honestly how it is for, it's a, there, it's, I feel like there's more, there are more workouts where you show up and you're kind of like, all right, let's get through this. Then there are ones where you get there and you're like, all right, here we go. Like, this is going to be a good time. You know what I yeah. mean? It, and those workouts, you could, you feel like you could work out all day. I'm sure you've had plenty of those. I would say mostly it's like, it depends on the environment. So if you have, like, if you have a training camp setting, sure. you have other competitive athletes around, then you, you do get those sessions still now when it's like, all right, we're working, I don't know, like this year on my birthday, I've been to a training camp with some really competitive athletes from Europe and we worked up to a heavy power clean and it was, it happened to be on my birthday. So I got the program. I was like, okay, birthday, what am I going to do? Oh, I'm going to work up to a heavy power clean. And like, I rarely ever go super heavy in training and I absolutely love power cleans, but it's a strength of mine. So I'm not doing it very often. And I just thought like, okay, it's, it's on my birthday and we're going to get, get to like actually max out. And then we just had like really sick group of people there everybody was hyping each other up there was like loud Link lincoln park music going on That's and awesome. i pr'd my lift by like 10 pounds and so that was like you know one of those sessions where it's like <laughs> i just want to stay in this moment forever this is amazing and in the beginning you get that so much whereas yeah. now it's like well if you're in that rhythm and you just train a lot and you, you're not hitting that many prs anymore and it's not so much just like throwing down for fun then you really cherish those moments a lot more yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was just going to say that you appreciate it way more when it, when you have to take, it takes a longer path to get to a certain point. You've been through more, face more obstacles that time where like you have a moment, like you just explained, it's, it's the best feeling ever. Like that's yeah. those, that's what you live for. That's what you go to the gym for, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so what is your, uh, what has your like coaching Ben, I know you said that you kind of learned a lot on your own, but at what point did you really take on and do you have a coach right now or do you pretty much yeah. do everything on your own still? No, I'm, I'm working with a coach. So I would say after the first, after my first year of kind of just like training a little bit on my own and picking a random CrossFit program and trying to like just do it, <laughs> I figured that I would profit from someone who actually has some experience in it and can give me like some some feedback based on my my strengths and weaknesses, what I should be doing and should not be doing. And I uh, started working with a coach from Switzerland. He's uh, Jonas Müller and he's he was building his own company or he still has his own like programming training company. So I've worked with him for like two years. And then um, I started actually working for him as well as a coach. 
And then I had access to my own programming again. And that wasn't really good because as I said, it was like the running sessions that were just kind of getting pushed out and out and out and then actually never got done. So I figured I, I'm going to need an external coach again. And that's when I started working with uh, Philip Biscard, who is from Denmark, and he's been a competitive athlete himself. And we've been working for the last, I would say, a bit over two years now. And it's been going pretty great. So I get, basically, I get all the trainings from him. So every Sunday, I get sent my, my trainings for the whole week. And when there's any feedback, like I write in my results, I write in how I'm feeling and uh, he adjusts everything based on, based on how the training is going or based on what we've seen in competitions or how the results have been. And so now obviously the training's intense too, like you said, you're training multiple times a day and you know, you have your coach dialing it back. I'm sure he's adjusting the volume based on how you're feeling. So what are your, what are your, some, what are some of your biggest recovery tools that you utilize and focus on? Make sure your body's, you know, in tip top shape. Um, very, very simple. I mean, the basics is sleep and then it's nutrition. So I just make sure that I go to bed regularly at the same time. I sleep in every day. That doesn't mean I'm sleeping till 10. That just means I'm going to bed at nine or 10 and then I'm sleeping until whatever seven or eight that is. So that I get my nine hours of sleep and then I make sure that I have my healthy, balanced uh, food prepared every day. I have my lunch with me usually when I'm at the gym and then for, for dinner, we just have a healthy meal, have a healthy breakfast and uh, yeah, not trying to make things too complicated, just uh, get the basics right. And then everything else on top is like the cherry on the cake. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. I feel so many people, you know, they tend to major in the minors, so to speak, like focusing on the little things like, you know, could be the massage gun or ice baths or whatever, things that, you know, aren't as critical as you know, your big foundational pieces like yeah. sleep and nutrition. And you take care of those, the rest will take care of themselves. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm also like, I love ice baths. I love to do like sauna mm -hmm. ice bath stuff or I'm stretching a lot, doing a lot of mobility, rehab work. I do get body work done regularly as well. But I just like to give the answer in like, all right, what's important? Well, sleep and nutrition and then everything else is like, yeah. you can you can figure that out once you've got your sleep that. and nutrition. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I know a lot of people like they'll like, it's funny because you Dylan and I are both hockey players. So you're kind of surrounded by athletes all the time and you can, you kind of see what their regimens are like, what their routines are like. And a lot of people, they will do the big things wrong. Like they'll get no sleep or they'll eat terrible food, but they'll try to do like all the little things right as well. It's like, okay, well, if you're not doing the big things, right, the little things mean absolutely nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, exactly. I, I feel like the, you know, the, 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 the nutrition stuff, uh, I, I've always kind of been, uh, someone who eats healthier cause I know the value of eating right. And that it actually fuels your body to perform, right? Have you ever, has there ever been a time where you kind of didn't eat as good as you should? And then you kind of switched and realized how, how much better performance you, you could put on if you ate properly. I would say it's, it's more so that I, that I used to feel it whenever I was like on vacation and just eating out. Yeah all the time or just like grabbing something on the go. That's more when I started feeling it. It wasn't like I had a really shitty diet at any point. It wasn't like I was going to, mm -hmm. I don't know, trying to train off of fries and burgers. Um, <laughs> well, maybe I did do that in the States a bit, but I don't know, back then I didn't really <laughs> have a feeling for <laughs> feeling for what feels good and what not. Yeah. 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 Definitely. No, it's definitely more like, more like the vacation. So yeah. When I have stuff that I'm not really used to eating and then I like having an upset stomach when you go to the gym and I've actually like started feeling really sick after, after certain foods yeah. sometimes. And uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I feel like it's not so much, it's not even so much where like when you're, when you're early on in your lifting journey or workout journey, you can kind of get away with those kinds of things. But when you, like you said earlier, it takes a lot to reach a new PR when you've been training for so long, those little things actually come into play. Like if you have a bad day of, of eating food or you're dehydrated a little bit, you'll be way off of, of what you'd, what you'd normally be. You know what I mean? From a strength standpoint, like I'm sure yeah. you felt the same, unless I'm just, 
it's just me but <laughs> no absolutely i mean there's let's just say there's not any more days where you like just get lucky and for some reason really out your poor outperform yeah. your expectations <laughs> yes. yeah 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 no definitely um and yeah so like what is uh you know one thing we we talk about a lot too is like the mental side of sports and obviously crossfit is you know you're you're competing at a high level where you know there's a lot of competition especially when you get to those like, like you were saying you're going back and forth with the um uh your your workout partners in that one workout where you've ended up beating your pr by like 10 or 15 pounds um what what do you kind of take from an approach from the mental side of crossfit and how do you prepare yourself to um ultimately perform physically when, when you get up to that platform or you get up for that workout it's I mean, it's an interesting one and I don't really have like a set answer for it. Also because, I mean, in our sport, like every workout is different. We don't know what we're going to be tested in. And oftentimes we only, mm -hmm. like when we go to a competition, they're announcing the workouts, like maybe the day before or on the same day even. So um, yeah, it really depends. Like every workout is a little bit different. Sometimes you really like try to stay just in your own lane, try to focus on focus on your own performance. Don't try to get carried away away from what the person left and right of you are doing. And then there's other workouts, especially for me, it's more like when it, when it's a strength of mine, when I know I can like be in front of the field, I can like have a chance to win a workout. Then it's more like, okay, I'm trying to like play the field and I'm trying to beat that guy and beat that person. But yeah, that, that really depends. Sometimes it's good to look left and right and let it motivate you. And then other times it's better to put on the blinders and just like focus on your own performance. Right, right. Yeah, I feel like it, it's, once again, like it's another thing we talk about is balance. We talk about, a lot, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff where uh, just like when training, right? Like if you push too hard, you'll overtrain, you'll be burned out. Like you kind of lose that motivation. It's tough to go to the gym every day, but you find a balance. You kind of tone it back a little bit to be able to push on the next day and the day after that. I feel like it's the same thing with, with the mental side and the competition. We just talked about this on a recent podcast where, um, you know, if you're so focused on other people, it takes away from your own, like, ener you know, your own energy and, and your own capabilities of being able to push forward. Um, but then again, if you focus on your own lane too much, you might not be pushing hard enough. Right. So that yeah. kind of the, seeing the people next to you be, you know, gives you that little extra, extra push. Um, but I feel like, you know, from my own, um, experience in sports, at least, uh, I, I play college hockey right now and, and the mental side of the game is, I feel like it's untapped. Like there's so much that you're, you can do so much capability that you can have and potential, um, that you can push through physical barriers simply through your like mental abilities and your ability to kind of do the monotonous things, right? Like, what do you, what do you do on a day where you wake up and you just feel like shit, your body feels like shit, but you know, you got to work out. Like, what's your process? <laughs> like, do you take a, do you take a cold shower in the morning or like, what is it? Oh, that, that's, that's a tough one. I mean, let, let's say some days you should make the decision to just like cut it and don't do it. But yeah. then it's like, that's always a very, it's, it's a thin line because you don't want to be the lazy guy, but at the same time, you right. want to be listening, you want to be listening to the body as well. So, um, I would say generally speaking, if I'm really feeling shit, um, or I'm not feeling that good, I'll probably still wait, my, make my way to the gym, but I might just adjust the intensity of the day completely. Like I might just like scale down the weights or just don't push the intensity at all. Just like get some volume in, but try and feel better after the session than you did going into the session. But I've also gone right, the wrong, yeah. wrong side of that route as well. So I actually had a, I had COVID a couple of months ago and on the first day oh, where really? I started, where I started feeling a little bit sick, I was like, all right, come on. Don't be like, don't be a pussy. Go to the gym, get the work done. <laughs> I did my, did my first session felt terrible. I was like, okay, I've just got one more conditioning workout and then I'm done for today. And I was training with, with two other guys as well. And I, I was, I told them before the workout, I was like, this is probably a really stupid idea, but I'm really going to push it <laughs> just because I want to yeah, prove it yeah. to myself. And I had like an active rest day right after. Right. So I like really pushed the workout. Yeah. And after the first half, like I just physically couldn't anymore. I just felt like so shit. And then I just got the work done, yeah. like scaled it down the second half, but really just trashed myself. And then the next, yeah. the next two weeks, I basically didn't do much. <laughs> Yeah. So what was COVID like for you? Like, did you, cause I had COVID back in 
2019, like right at the beginning, it kind of hit me hard. Early birds. It was, it kind of put <laughs> down for the count. Like, um, did it, did it affect you? Like I, working out was an absolute nightmare for like at least two weeks. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I would say once that I realized it was, it was that COVID thing. Um, I was trying to be really smart about it. So I was still like, right. I didn't train for, let's say a good four or five days. I didn't do any training whatsoever. And then the first week where I tried to get back into it, like the intensity was super low. I wouldn't really call it training. It was more like I would sit on the bike. Yeah. I would, I would ride on a bike for, for an hour, but not like riding and sweating, but just like ride on the bike, maybe walk yeah. up the hill. Yeah. I would do some really light weights, like 50 percent ish for just a few reps, just like to right. touch, touch a bar and do some movements. Yeah. But as soon as I tried to go into a handstand or whatever, like I just felt shit right away. So I just cut it. But uh, right. yeah, then going back into actual like hard working out was tough. I remember the f I, w I had to do a qualifier, like an online qualifier for a competition right after, or I should have done it right during that time. But then I kind of had to do it as soon as possible. And the first day I got back to the gym, mm -hmm. to the gym I was like, well, I'm just going to like have to do this now and try to push through uh, one of them. And I was like, I was shit. Like my, my performance was yeah. so bad. Uh, my, I felt bad. My lung was hurting. I didn't hit what I was expecting to do and I was really beat down. I was like, shit, did I get so like unfit in those two weeks? I got like, it's weird. Like I would say, I'm, yeah. I don't know. You just lose all your confidence. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It can do. I mean, it attacked, like for me, my lung capacity was atrocious. Like any conditioning or cardio that I was doing, yeah. it was just like, it, it was absolutely depleted. Like it was yeah, insane. Yeah. Um, but it's funny because it's so good. just going back to what, yeah, just going back to what we were talking about before on the days that you really don't feel like doing it. It's weird because on the days that you don't feel like doing it, sometimes you go to the gym and then you feel great. You have a great workout and then it can be the opposite too. You get up, you feel great. You're ready to go to the gym and you get to the gym and you have a terrible workout. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, it's weird how that it's almost like just go and see what happens, right? Like just yeah, show yeah. up and then try to get the work done, you know? But, um, but yeah, so Let's, uh, so we're pretty much up to speed now, I guess. So what's your training look like, uh, leading up to, so I know the, the open, the CrossFit open is in February. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So what does your training look like leading up to, to February? Um, I'm going to compete at another event in December. So I'm right now I'm preparing for that event that will be, um, in Mexico, the functional fitness world championship it's like different it kind of like the same thing as crossfit but just other right. organization so i'm competing there and uh from then on i'll be training for pretty much the quarterfinals because the open doesn't really matter at all i'll like i'll make the top 10 percent even if it's just mm -hmm. like a training effort on a bad day <laughs> so i'll get through the i'll get through the open and then i'll uh hope to have a good performance at the quarters and uh, then prepare for the semis. So it's going to be just a lot like more, more training, more intense training, more like sports specific training. So more CrossFit workouts, less just like cyclical or just strength work. Yeah. But a, a good mix of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so just like, so one thing that we've talked about with a lot of athletes on the podcast is like, and a lot of people don't realize this. They, they see like the whole overnight success thing, right? Where they, all of a sudden an athlete wins the, the CrossFit <laughs> games or something like that. And everybody's like, Oh my God, like that's crazy. But they don't realize they've been, they've been doing CrossFit for maybe 10 years, 15 years. Yeah. And a lot of people who are just getting into sports, they don't realize that it's, it's a day after day, week after week, month after month, grind and discipline and persistence to get the job done every single day. Is there like, like what advice would you give to somebody that's listening right now to s take a step into that journey, even though knowing that it's going to might take 10 or 15 years or even 20 years to get to where you want to be. Absolutely. I mean, I totally, totally feel that way. I would say um, you have to be realistic. You have to set goals. I like to set goals for not just like, Oh, I want to do this, but like go specific goals. What do you want to achieve in the long, uh, long term? What do you want to achieve in the midterm? What do you want to achieve in the short term? 
and then try and weigh those goals. How important are they to you? So for me, it was like when I started with like getting a bit more into CrossFit, I would still say like 2018 or so. I was very new into it, but it was clear to me that I wanted to be good at it. And I knew that I could probably make it to that semifinals mm -hmm. level. So for me, that was then the big goal. Like that was the one thing that I was really chasing. I wanted to get to the semifinals, but I have only done it for, I had only done it for a few months. So I knew I was not going to achieve that by 2019 in February. <laughs> like it's just not realistic. Right. So I've set the goal that I wanted to make it within the next two or three years. And then I took some step backs and uh, didn't try to like, peak for a competition that's coming up in three weeks because I know it wasn't going to bring me closer to my goal in three years. So I would set some milestone goals. Like I wanted to hit certain weights. I wanted to hit certain, certain times on certain workouts. Like I had those small steps to always have successes on the way, but I always had that big picture in mind where I knew that everything that I'm doing right now, it needs to make sense for the goal that I want to achieve in two or three years. Right. And so it, like it also helps. Battles, yeah. 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 And it also helps to not try and like overachieve anything in the first two months. Like you're not going to become right, super right. crazy good just because you're like training four times a day and like killing yourself in two months. <laughs> so like avo avoiding that, oh, avoiding that training burnout or injuries is very important as well. Yeah. So you like, you, you keep the, the end goal in sight and in mind but then you kind of reel it in and focus on okay what am i going to do today to ultimately get me to that point maybe two years three years down the line yeah exactly i mean break it down however however much you need to but just know that right, it's uh right. yeah every step is part of the process yeah yeah is there has there been any like major setbacks or even minor setbacks that you've had since you've began CrossFit? Uh, cause obviously, I mean, I know it's a very, it's a taxing sport. Like, like we've talked about, everybody knows that and, you know, knock on wood, but injuries are a very, um, prominent thing in, in, in that sport, just cause there's, there's so much training and there's a lot of different movements that you're doing. Um, have you had any setbacks or any point in time where you're like, okay, maybe, you know, maybe I can't do this or maybe I'm not cut out for this. Yeah, I, that's um, that's an exaggeration, obviously. But yeah, I'm yeah. Just saying like from, from <laughs> no, the no. point of view. Um, no, I would say I've been lucky that I didn't have any like major injuries. But like ever since I started CrossFit, I've been fairly healthy. I mean, there are some niggles and pains that are coming and going, but I've never had anything that's like that like took me out for for longer. But I would say it's more that in certain like workouts or tests or mostly also like at competitions there's sometimes a performance or a feeling that you're just like, fuck, I, like, I, ca I can't do this. Like I just had, I just had an event. Um, <laughs> it's funny. Um, I had an event where like the first work, it actually went really well, but I felt like I felt completely trashed afterwards. Like I just, I couldn't get my shit together and there was nothing I could do to feel better. And I was, I just remember sitting there with my girlfriend. I was like talking to her and I was like, I'm not going to like, why am I doing this to myself? I'm not going to do this to myself anymore. I feel so bad. Like this is not worth it. And then like 20, 30 minutes later, like, okay, I'm getting back to myself. I'm feeling better again. You get motivated for the next one. And then it's like the next one goes well. And it's like, this is awesome. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So there's yeah, more. It's, it's crazy there's, how that works though. Yeah. The, there's a, I would say there's, there's a lot of moments where you're like, especially when you don't perform as well as you expected, or maybe like the first time that I went to the semifinals, like I basically, it was dr still during that COVID time. So it was like, my big goal was to get mm -hmm. to the semifinals for three years in the making. And then I finally made it. It's like, I've reached that big step that I've always tried to make. And then it was set to an online competition because of the COVID restrictions. And for me, that was just like, mm -hmm. I don't know, kind of like the dream shattered a bit because it's not the same competing right, online. Right. And like, I just barely made the cut to get into those, uh, into the semifinal level. Like I was like the second to last person that qualified. And so I just knew I wasn't going to advance anyway. And now I'm competing in an online competition. I have to basically organize everything myself. Like I have to get a gym. I have to get a judge. I have to get someone to video record me. I have to pay a fee to even participate. And it was just like, wow, I've made it. And now as a punishment, I have to organize all that stuff. I have to go through some hard <laughs> workouts and I'll probably take like last place and don't advance. 
And then, yeah. well, so um, I was pretty demotivated at the time, but I was like, no, <laughs> come on. You're like, I've reached the goal. I'm still going to do my best. I'm still going to try and compete there. And then the first workout was like one of the most terrible workouts I've done. Like I really felt completely completely like shit for two hours like I was I remember laying in the gym with like bags of ice on my head on my feet everywhere because I just like I felt like puking the whole time I was dizzy I couldn't eat I couldn't drink it's like I just felt bad and then the really? second yeah it just really wasn't wasn't a good day maybe too much pre-workout or whatever it was I don't know <laughs> That's and uh, yeah I mean oh the whole God, yeah. the whole competition from there on was just pretty bad i mean i took last place in that workout as well and i was pretty much last place in the whole competition and so for me it was like i've been training i've been training all those years to get this experience and to get a last place from it as well yeah. and it took me a few weeks to like yep. get some motivation back and uh, then i just figured that i didn't really reach my goal yet I, i'm gonna have to do it again and i'm gonna have to get the chance to compete in person and then luckily I've, uh, I've, I've achieved it last year again and actually made it to the live competition. And then it was like, it felt like it was all worth it. Right, right. And you know what? That It's funny you say that because so Dylan and I talk about this all the time. Sometimes we have, like you have in, um, you know, in the questions that you responded to, you said like, you know, you don't really have a... Um, an underdog story like that kind of thing and we've had guests that say that but that's an underdog story right there like you kind of your all your dreams are right in front of you you've reached where you want to be and then you kind of not let yourself down but you don't do as well as you anticipated is what you expected and that's kind of the breaking point right like that's where a lot of people decide to either push on and move forward and keep chasing the dream or they're like you know this ain't cut out for me and obviously you you kept pushing through that with like what did you what did you do to kind of get through that time because obviously it had to be pretty disappointing to have that kind of performance when you finally reach the place that you want to be at yeah i mean i don't need, i don't really know what it was because it wasn't that i was super like disappointed with the performance per se because i didn't expect to have a great performance compared mm -hmm. to i mean i, I know i was right. competing with the best athletes in in the world at that time so yeah i knew i wasn't going to be that good but it was just like, I was so far off on so many of the workouts and I just felt like I did not belong. <laughs> so it was more like the, the mental thing of like, did I, re like, did I really belong there? Was it a fluke that I got in there? And I took that as a motivation to prove myself that it wasn't a fluke. And, uh, that, I think that that's what, uh, kept me going for the, for the next year. Right. Right. Yeah, that's good stuff. Um, yeah, so that that pretty much brings us up to speed to where we are um, today. Uh, do you have anything else that you want to share? What actually, first of all, what are your, what are your goals for the next few years? I know obviously it's to make it as far as you can with with the games and whatnot. But uh, do you have any other kind of goals within the CrossFit industry or any other endeavors that you that you uh, kind of have in mind that you desire? Yeah, I would say for the for the moment, it's all focused on just being as the best athlete that I can be. Mm -hmm. So want to advance further in the semifinals, uh, get as close to those top spots and hopefully make it to the games one day. That would be like, like the top goal. And, uh, yeah, everything, everything is focused around that. And then if I can go on to yeah. compete in other bigger competitions in the off season, that's obviously also a goal to try and make also more like try and make a living off of living off of the sport that I'm doing with, uh, with the sport itself. Right. Right. And so what's like the prime age for a CrossFit athlete? Is it like early thirties? Is that like, kind of like where you, you know, you probably f would feel your stronger. So like, what's the average, average age in the field? Do you know? It's pretty much where I'm at right now. So like late twenties is I think yeah. the average age for CrossFit games, men, I think uh, women might be mm -hmm. slightly younger. At least there's some really young athletes coming up right now, but um, no, there's, I mean, there's right. people around the 20, uh, like late twenties, early thirties, even competing at the highest level. But obviously as time goes on, there might be a little bit of a shift towards the younger side when people start training at an earlier or at a younger age and right. actually develop as a CrossFit athlete. Whereas still right, right now, a lot of, a lot of athletes, even at the highest level are coming from different sports backgrounds. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. I could definitely see that happening too. Like the, just more awareness that's going to come to the, the, the sport of CrossFit, the younger it's going to become. And there's going to be like, you know, funnels pretty much from a young age, people are going to be doing this. So that, that, yeah, that, that is very true. And interesting. I mean, it's growing rapidly every year. I feel like it's becoming more and more popular. So it's definitely yeah. on that trajectory. Um, you got anything else that you, that you want to share with our listeners or, you know, any advice that you could give to our listeners? Cause you know, a lot of our listeners are either athletes or they're definitely striving to reach a goal. Cause that's kind of how we built this, this brand and community is, is, um, you know, they're, they're striving for something mostly mm-hmm. athletic, but obviously other endeavors as well. Do you have one piece of advice, um, <laughs> that you could give to them or multiple? Oh, I'm not that good with, uh, like the motivational quotes and stuff like that. <laughs> I just, yeah, yeah. yeah oh it doesn't even have to be just like one thing that you've learned even you know that one major thing no i think just i mean set goals uh be realistic and uh if you set them like try and find a structure that is geared to making those goals happen mm-hmm. and also like question like right. question yourself right. every once in a while like see if if it's still like if you're on the right yeah, track, that's if true. what Honestly, you're that, trying that to do is actually people, what you're though. really like they, trying to they think they're on the right to track achieve and they'll, they'll just work like hard painting it's a picture like, for yourself uh, because you think it's cool. It's like, because then it's not going to work, right? Like it's not deliberate. It's not a deliberate practice of like actually leveling yourself up, getting 1% better. I'm sure you've heard that quote, like get 1% better every single day. Like, okay, that's actually hard to do. I would say that, that would be pretty good. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would take the 1% every day. Yeah. I know that would where can i sign up 100 for days you're at 100 that's pretty, yeah, pretty that's good, pretty good. <laughs> yeah yeah well actually more because then you get the percent of the percent as well so right <laughs> yeah 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 that's true uh dylan you got anything else that you uh that you want to share or any questions you going to ask him no i think we covered it all yeah it was great to have you on and, and hear your story obviously you know we don't have many crossfit athletes come on we see the usual baseball hockey football wrestling that sort of thing so it's it's nice to hear your story from the CrossFit side of things and, you know, what goes into your training and everything that you've done. And, you know, we wish you nothing but the best moving forward. And we'll have to have you on again in the future when you've been through a few more games and a couple more events and, and see how you do. Let's hope so. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate being on the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. And we actually forgot to mention in the beginning, we, we had uh, Bethany Shadburn on. Uh, oh, at this awesome. point, probably a year and a half or two years ago. So it's funny now you're, you're our second CrossFit athlete. So, but we definitely want to have you on in the future. Like Dylan said, I think it's, you know, that's part of why we're doing this, right. Is to kind of show that these journeys are possible. These goals, you set a goal that you can reach it. Just, just despite the odds, whatever you're up against, any obstacles you face that you can reach that goal. So we'll, we'll have you on when you win the CrossFit games. No, I'm just kidding. We'll <laughs> no have pressure. you on regardless, what, you know, wherever you're at at any point in time. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Uh, but hey, it was, it was awesome to have you on. Great conversation, and we'd love to dive into more topics, you know, on, on another episode for sure. I would appreciate to do so. Thanks, Joey. Thanks, Dylan. Yeah, it's a good episode, though. I mean, that was, it was like I just ended. Like we had the last CrossFit athlete we had on was uh, was Bethany, and two we somehow we landed two unbelievable CrossFit athletes. Like they're both. Mm-hmm very legit and i think he's he's on the rise as well we kind of had him on at an early point in time i think he's you know 28 years old he's getting to that that peak performance years and stage yeah i bet you one or two years we see him in the crossfit games i know that'd be awesome yeah who knows maybe he'll be a ud energy athlete that would be He's sick with the games that would be oh cool. my god that would be so cool i know but they have their freaking um uh, what's the crossfit uh rain? life aid right Does rain no spo- I think it's Life Aid. Life Aid's in all the CrossFit gyms. I don't know if they sponsor the games or not, but I know that CrossFit gyms all across the the country and probably the, the globe, honestly, they they have that. Mm. Um, but yeah, so yeah. Um, overall, I mean, just like I was saying, and it's so funny, man, because a lot of people don't realize that they've been through obstacles. People who have been through ho- obstacles very rarely realize that they've been through difficult times because they've gotten to the other end like 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 i was saying like how he responded to the questions is like he doesn't really have a a story where he faced any obstacles or anything like that well what's coming in almost last place at you know one of the biggest points of your life that you wanted to reach Mm -hmm. what is that you know what i mean that's a freaking underdog story right there what are you going to decide to do are you going to quit or are you going to keep going forward um yeah and yeah it was cool it was cool to hear that because obviously he was one of those people that kept pushing on forward and 
he explained his advice to a T by how he said he wasn't very structured before in his training. And over the years, he got more and more structured, not just in training, but nutrition and, you know, how he was planning his day out. And that was his advice to our listeners. And I, I couldn't agree more. I think, I mean, we're humans are creatures of habit, right? Like, yeah. and it was you set a goal, yeah. find a structure to accomplish it. Exactly. Exactly. And he, he like explained it to a T and it's funny because I always feel like when my, I don't know about you, but when you have a road trip or anything like that, where you're getting back at like three in the morning, you kind of feel like all fucked up. Like you're thrown off, like something's off. You know what I mean? And oh, yeah. like when you, the next when day you, is a wash almost. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. And it, and it's crazy because when you stick to a schedule, you just feel so much better. You feel more productive. You feel more energized. Yeah. Like, I mean, granted like yeah, that the rhythm. in part has to do with like your actual, your body's Circadian rhythms and rhythm. yeah your yeah. circadian rhythms and everything involved in that but it's it's more than just that you know it's knowing you're gonna like if you work out at two o'clock every day your body's gonna be primed to work out at two o'clock but if you work out at two o'clock one day and the next day you get up at 5 a.m for a 5 a.m workout obviously your body's gonna be like what the hell are we doing we're supposed to be sleeping right now <laughs> you know mm-hmm. so um yeah. but yeah i mean uh, he was a great great guy too like you can tell he's very genuine and we've we've mentioned this before too like it's people like that are that are willing to come on we we haven't had a single bad guest for that exact reason because the people who are egocentric and and are you know selfish they're not going to do that they're only going to go on the joe rogan experience or like you know what i mean something like that like no okay he's going to take the time out of his day to help people and you know we're not a freaking we're not bang energy. We're not gym shark, right? Like we're an up and coming company, but he was still willing to come on and share. Yeah, exactly. We're better than that. <laughs> uh, well, we are for the listeners who are listening right now. We are better than them, but we're, we'll get there someday. <laughs> uh, but anyways, yeah, like it's just really cool to see people like that who actually want to help a community and, 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 you know, help people. Cause that's what it's all about. Like, that's why we're doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's why we're trying to build this community. I would be way more thrilled and excited if I had, thousands of people who are on a mission because of our brand than a dollar sign attached to our bank accounts like i would i would much rather build a community um so i thought that was cool and you you can just really tell too i mean we had connection issues in the beginning and if it was anybody else any anybody who's selfish or anything like that they would have been like oh this is a joke you know and he would have would have never came back and he came right back on and and we had an hour conversation so um it was great but, uh, but yeah, so, um, we will put his social links in the, uh, description of the podcast episode. This will be live on Apple podcast, Spotify, all the podcasting streaming platforms, along with the video version on YouTube. Um, and then obviously definitely follow along on his journey. Cause he's, he's headed to big, big places and, um, yeah, you can follow us on Instagram at underdog underscore brand. That's where we're kind of everything mainstream that's going on in the brand is happening uh podcast snippets any uh ud energy related content uh will be on there we explain our our formulation in depth and compare it to other energy drinks and whatnot and yeah so you can stay tuned for more information through our social channels dylan you got anything else you want to add no no i think that's everything like we said it was great to have him on and you know get another crossfit athlete on and it's such a different sport, you know, um, from your typical team sports, you know, it's just you, it's an individual. So the mental side of things plays a much bigger role. So it's always neat to hear those stories and you know, what they go through. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like on the topic of the individual sports real quick, um, is like, you, like you said, the mental side, which it seemed to be not an issue for him. Like it was a kind of a non-negotiable. Like he hasn't really had any, um, you know, that hasn't been an issue for him. Um, yep. which is, which is interesting because you think you'd be more in your own head if you're in an individual sport, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, as opposed to like a team sport, if a guy's not performing well, you could kind of be like, you know, what a lot of people will do is they'll push it off on the guy next to them. Like this guy is not, you know what I mean? Our team isn't playing well when in reality, it's probably you that's playing poorly. But when it's an individual yeah. sport and you do poorly, it's on you. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? There's no getting around it. So I think that kind of like bluntness to it kind of gives you the 
and he's he mentions like be realistic with yourself i think he was kind of getting at that aspect of it too right like be realistic like okay if you did really well then you're doing really well if you're doing poorly you're doing poorly what do you need to change to get to that next level so um, i'm excited to follow along and, and see where things go next but um as always thank you guys for listening and we will see you on the next episode